He's back again, and about time too. Donkey Kong is gracing the Nintendo Switch with a shiny new remake of the Game Boy Advance game, Mario vs. Donkey Kong. The Big Ape has had a rougher road to stardom than many others in Nintendo's library, but you can bet your last banana that he's built up a jungle's worth of hit games over the last three decades. I'm Kyle with 1UP Inch. And this is every Donkey Kong game ranked worst to best. Now, Mario had his fair share of edutainment duds early in his career. But did you know that DK might be able to claim that he's had it even worse? Donkey Kong Jr. Math is a low effort project that reuses assets from the much better known second arcade game to put the younger Kong to work solving basic math equations. It holds the dubious honor of being the worst selling NES launch title in North America. We're also skeptical that a game like this would be any good at teaching kids about math, even with a rudimentary two-player mode to add some friendly competition. It would probably be more fun to teach real apes to solve equations. Unfortunately, that's not the only example of Nintendo trying to recapture lightning in a bottle. After the smashing success of the original Donkey Kong arcade game. Donkey Kong 3 makes the questionable decision to remove Mario completely, replacing him with an insect exterminator named Stanley. The gameplay also radically differs from its predecessors, with less of an emphasis on platforming and more on vertical shooting in the style of Space Invaders. Donkey Kong has broken into Stanley's greenhouse and the exterminator has to use his spray gun to ward off waves of bugs and get rid of the big ape by shooting him from below. Let's try not to think about that. A drastic drop off in sales compared to the first two arcade games signaled the end of the series of Donkey Kong games and the reason that Stanley's never gotten any spin-offs of his own. Big gameplay shakeups don't often turn out so hot for the Kong clan. Take Donkey Kong Barrel Blast as another example. This Wii title is DK's first and only outing as the lead character in a racing game. After numerous appearances in the Super Mario Kart franchise and after the Nintendo 64 classic, Diddy Kong Racing gave his sidekick a chance to shine. However, Barrel Blast does little to set itself apart from scores of other Mario Kart clones. And what little uniqueness it does offer, includes dodgy motion controls and a lack of online multiplayer at a time in which Mario Kart was even jumping on that bandwagon. It doesn't make use of the DK Bongo controllers either, even though it was originally designed with those in mind. The charm and flavor of the Donkey Kong Country series can't save this humdrum game, although we have to give it some props as the only racing game out there where your vehicle of choice is rocket-powered bongos. Much earlier in Nintendo's history, the Kong clan wasn't anywhere near as fleshed out. The idea of giving Donkey Kong a family originated with his second arcade game. Donkey Kong Jr. turns the tables on the formula from the first game. I'm Donkey Kong Jr. and that's my papa. Casting Mario as the antagonist who's locked up DK and placing the player in control of the ape's son. The platforming and level design isn't as tight or memorable here, but Donkey Kong Jr. is nonetheless an exciting arcade experience that paved the way for an entire family of Kongs, albeit by eventually aging Jr. into the modern DK, while the arcade ape became a grumpy old senior citizen. In a way then, this game marks the debut of the Donkey Kong that's become the face of the character for the last 30 years. Please help me save my papa. Not that the face can sell everything. as the gimmicky Donkey Konga games can attest. These funky rhythm games were a few years ahead of their time when they debuted in 2003, before the likes of Guitar Hero and Rock Band saturated the gaming market with hardware peripherals based on musical instruments. Without the allure of a vast library of rock and pop songs to play along to the beat, Donkey Konga fumbled its premise and never achieved anywhere near the same level of popularity as the games that would follow in its wake. The third game never even merited an international release, and the concept of of rocking out with Donkey Kong has gone down as just another one of Nintendo's weird experiments that never panned out. What's even more incredible though is that in the hands of a different team of developers, the DK bongos were put to use for something other than a rhythm game. Enter Donkey Kong Jungle Beat which uses the bongos as controls in a hybrid action platformer with quick-time events. EAD Tokyo deserves praise for this innovative title, 
that picks up from where the rare lead Donkey Kong games left off. It's clear that Nintendo recognized the team's strengths, too, as afterwards they were put in charge of all 3D Mario games going forward. It's likely that we owe the brilliance of Super Mario Galaxy to this quirky little GameCube title. The DK bongos may not have worked out in the long run, Ooh. but they were hardly the first time that the developers behind Donkey Kong's games took risks with his platformers. The three Donkey Kong Land games attempt to replicate the stunning graphical achievements of Donkey Kong Country Country on the humble Game Boy, with mixed results. While these titles are technically impressive for the extent to which they're able to imitate the cutting-edge visuals of the games they're based on, that can't save them from what they are. Not Blurry, hard-down demakes of some of the greatest platformers to grace the SNES. Granted, they're not at the bottom of the list owing to the overall high quality of the country titles that inspired them, but we can't in good conscience place these ports any higher, especially in light of the more polished iterations of the series that have come out some years later on the Game Boy Advance. You can never have too much Donkey Kong Country, but Donkey Kong Land will always be a poor substitute. At least sometimes DK gets to star in a handheld outing that's more than simply a pale imitation of a better game. Donkey Kong King of Swing and its sequel, Jungle Climber, might not fully qualify on account of their gameplay deriving from the NES puzzle game Clue Clue Land, but the Kongs more than make these titles their own. DK and Diddy swing and blast their way through maze-like levels, all set against familiar backdrops in the style of the country games. Jungle Climber especially takes advantage of the Nintendo DS to improve on the visuals and offer players a taller field of vision as they swing through the air. It also makes better use of its buddy system, letting the Kongs tackle levels together and split up to solve puzzles. That's using your nostalgia throwbacks wisely. Ooh. We got another blast from the past like that this month, with the remake of the original Mario vs. Donkey Kong on the Nintendo Switch. This long-running handheld series is based on the premise of the Donkey Kong arcade game when most of DK's other games had dropped it. The Big Ape takes on the antagonist role once again, forcing Mario to navigate puzzle-filled stages in the hopes of rescuing Pauline. Beginning with the second entry for the Nintendo DS, Mario himself stepped aside to make way for mini Mario toys that players would have to guide through the levels. Strange concept aside, we're welcoming the return of the first game to the spotlight. Donkey Kong might not get to do all that much whenever he's operating as the bad guy, but there's tons of room to expand and mayhem to be mined from what he and Mario have been up to in the last 20 years. Plus, the Mario movie got us all hyped to reignite the classic rivalry between the plumber and his OG adversary. So let's see what they can do. Barrel. Barrel. But of course, we can't go any further in the ranking without finally bringing in the game that launched the careers of these two titans of the industry, the Donkey Kong arcade game from 1981. Sure, it's nothing special by modern standards, but these four little levels of Jumpman climbing up scaffolding and dodging barrels set the stage for decades of video gaming to come. You can't get hooked on it. Are you? Yeah. Donkey Kong is a timeless classic, one that's been reimagined and expanded upon in countless ways since its initial release. Donkey Kong. Plus, it's just a fun arcade experience. There's a reason why it's stuck around in the public consciousness when so many others have faded into obscurity. Few other games exemplify the staying power of that original formula than Donkey Kong for the Game Boy. What seems at first glance to be merely a handheld port of the arcade game quickly opens up into an experience all its own. 100 levels crafted in the arcade style, grouped into theme levels like Super Mario Bros. platformers, await the player this time as the ever crafty DK keeps finding ways to elude Mario's clutches. This was the project that inspired the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series a decade later, and it's truly an underrated gem linking arcade and handheld DK. If you're looking for a top-tier classic Donkey Kong experience, you'd be hard-pressed to find one better than this. Now, if you've been following along with us so far, you'll notice that we haven't yet touched upon all the really big Donkey Kong games. The ape and his family enjoyed a newfound surge in popularity in the mid-90s, thanks to developer Rareware. 
one that they rode all the way through an unfortunately short-lived period of superstardom, almost on par with that of DK's old rival. The game that's often cited as the end of the Kong revival is Donkey Kong 64. I've never seen anything like it, there's fruit everywhere. A collectathon platformer following on the heels of Rare's work with Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie. Unfortunately, DK64 proves that bigger is not always better, as it plops the Kongs down in a world even larger than that of Banjo games, and tasks them with finding a truly ludicrous number of collectibles. Bloated is the word that springs to mind when discussing the flaws of this era of gaming, and it's not helped in this case by the clunky tag barrel system forcing players to constantly switch between the five playable Kongs. Still, never before or since has DK's world been so vast, and Rare deserves credit for bringing the spirit of Donkey Kong Country into 3D, along with some of their characteristic quirky humor. We believe one of them looks like this. Who else would have ever imagined the Kongs performing their own rap, or throwing down with King K. Rule in a boxing match? Truth be told, the country games were showing signs of fatigue even before their big, exhausting collectathon. Luckily, Donkey Kong Country 3, Dixie's Double Trouble, holds up much better than its Nintendo 64 successor. It's only in contrast to those that came before it that it falls short. For the second game in a row, Donkey Kong is an ape in distress, and this time it's Dixie Kong and her baby cousin Kitty who take center stage. There's a sharp contrast between their playstyles that allow for some interesting variation in how players tackle levels. Although many found Kitty to be an annoying replacement for fan favorite Diddy. The world of Donkey Kong Country 3 is also larger and a bit more non-linear than its previous entries, and it takes a few more risks with its many stage gimmicks. We also have to mention the Game Boy Advance remake that features an additional world, as well as an entirely new soundtrack. You don't see day. Overall, Donkey Kong Country 3 may not be perfect, but we can think of more annoying babysitting gigs on the SNES than the one Dixie saddled with. <laughs> It would take almost 15 years for another developer to revisit the side-scrolling platformer genre with DK, and Retro Studios had some big shoes to fill following the legacy of the SNES era. They more than deliver with Donkey Kong Country Returns, a stellar comeback for the Kongs as they jump and swing their way through the lush environments of their island home once again. Returns provides more of a Mario-inspired platforming experience than any of the older country games did, albeit with all the expected DK flair as well as creative boss designs and a fantastically percussive soundtrack that builds on the foundation of the original. It might be somewhat basic in contrast to the other games in the series, and the conspicuous lack of Kremlings is kind of a letdown. But nonetheless, Returns was exactly what Donkey Kong needed to start off a new era of platforming brilliance. Of course, what Retro Studio did for the Kongs in the 2010s Rareware had kickstarted back in the 90s. Donkey Kong Country, the game that claims the bronze medal of best Donkey Kong game on our list, was a marvel in cutting-edge 3D technology at the time of its release. Even though the industry has long since moved on from pre-rendered graphics, Donkey Kong Country has plenty of substance to back up its distinctive style. The gameplay contrast between Donkey Kong and newcomer Diddy the bevy of bonuses to find in each level, and the addition of rideable animal buddies set the country games apart from the Mario platformers of the day. And it all started here in this bold new take on what had been at the time one of Nintendo's most neglected characters. It's never been done before for a video game! You're gonna freak! See? In one way or another, just about every Donkey Kong game that's followed Donkey Kong Country has built upon its legacy. And the only reason it's not taking the top spot is because two of them have reached for even greater heights of success. Retro Studios were really going for the gold with their second take on the Kongs. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. It may not win our gold medal, but it more than earns our silver medal for best Donkey Kong game. If you can look past the subtitle sounding like a popsicle flavor you'd find in a grocery freezer aisle, Tropical Freeze is everything fans could have asked for as a follow-up to the already solid returns. 
The soundtrack is top tier. Dixie and Cranky add more variety to the gameplay. The bosses are even more of a hit, and the challenge has been dialed up all the way for a punishing but ultimately rewarding platforming experience. This game even manages to take the prospect of a bunch of ice levels and make it satisfying with a stunning variety of visuals and gameplay gimmicks, far beyond sliding around on slippery ice. Tropical Freeze heralds great things for DK in the future, and we're looking forward to the Big Ape's next great platformer. We are, however, going to be closing out this ranking by looking back and awarding our gold medal for best Donkey Kong game to Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Kong Quest. Few games come as close to pure platforming perfection as Donkey Kong Country 2, which takes everything its predecessor did well and dials it all the way up to 11. Donkey Kong's been taken captive, so it's up to Diddy and his girlfriend Dixie to take the fight directly to the Kremlings in their home base. This dynamic duo pairs excellently with Donkey Kong Country 2's wider variety of challenges and greater verticality striking a balance between Diddy's speed and Dixie's unmatched aerial control. The Animal Buddies are back and more useful than ever, and the bonus system of the first game has been expanded with a number of tricky collectibles that will really make you work to get that secret ending and that coveted 102% completion. The Kremlin's new pirate shtick plays out perfectly against the gloomy backdrop of Crocodile Isle, which is riddled with half-sunken galleons, haunted forests, nightmarish castle dungeons, and even a theme park that's definitely slacking on the safety standards. And who could forget the majestic beauty and brutal difficulty of the Bramble levels, the origin of the iconic Sticker Brush Symphony. DK himself may not get to do much in Donkey Kong Country 2, but we know that he must be as proud of his friend for starring in this absolute masterpiece of a game. 